Uh, I, but I, well, I, wanna, I guess I want to try to talk about two things at once here. Uh, and uh, you, as you noted, I worked for a for-profit newspaper for 25 years before I went into the not-for-profit journalism world. And there's a connection here that's, that's directly connected to that, sto that story that we wrote about with uh, Sherry Brooms and <clears throat> her, her daughter, Michaela Bonaparte, and the uh, havoc that the government malfeasance uh, wreaked upon their lives. Uh, but I, the way I wanna explain it is that uh, the idea that uh, New York City has the largest public housing authority in America, it's by far the largest, is 400,000 tenants in public housing, which is like the size of Boston. Uh, and it's one of these, um, it's kind of a, a parallel universe in New York. It's like, it's right there. It's all over the place. And for many, many years, and while I was at the Daily News in particular, nobody paid any attention to it, including the journalism, the journalists, the many journalists in New York City who covered New York City. And it was kind of a, a weird thing to me. Like, I didn't really understand that. So while I'm at the Daily News, I'm trying to get them to pay attention to this, this, uh, this world that exists. And they weren't interested. They had no interest in this. And at some point in 2012, I tried a different tack. I said, well, okay, you don't really care about the conditions uh, that public housing tenants are dealing with. So let's just take a look at the management of this thing. And of course, it was completely messed up and there was um, absolute you know, malfeasance, neglect, cover up, all of this stuff was going on. And that got the attention of the editors at the Daily News. So now I was able to kind of work the other stuff into the story by starting with malfeasance and then getting into what does this do to people? Now, in the case of Sherry Brooms, what I was, what I was trying to do with this was that one of the major problems I ran into while I was uh, poking around in this alternative universe was the issue of lead paint. And the problem with lead paint is that I, I really got to, uh, I was kind of surprised at this. It, it seemed as almost as if in the New York City uh, Department of Health would always say, oh, we already fixed that. It's, that's not a problem. Don't worry about that. Uh, that's, you know, the numbers have come way down. And so I found this, um, this, this situation where what they were doing was they would test an apartment, the department, if a kid registers a high level of uh, blood lead level, they, they were obligated by law to go in and test the apartment. So the health department goes in, tests the department, the apartment, and registers lead. The housing authority would then go in and do their own test and say, no, there's no lead. So this is what kicked off uh, my obsession with the lead paint issue, which I still think is the, uh, one of the more nefarious aspects of what happened here. So uh, I'm working for the Daily News. The Daily News is slowly but surely deteriorating. Ultimately, it is purchased by a hedge fund. What a surprise. And along with the Chicago Tribune and the Baltimore Sun and um, um, the Orlando Sentinel and Hartford Current and Allentown. So, so what's happening at that point is slowly but surely the resources that would allow me to do the things that I was doing and focusing on that issue and all of the issues regarding public, uh, public housing were taken away from me. And I became, it became impossible to do this work. And lucky me, the people who decided that they wanted to start the city which is a wonderful nonprofit uh, local news organization, local news, I'm gonna emphasize that again, uh, came to me and said, we'd like you to come over here and do this. And, and so, so here's, here's the point of all of this. Um, if I had continued to stay in mainstream media, so-called for-profit uh, or what I would call hedge fund journalism, I would never have been able to write that story. It would never have seen the light of day, no way. The nonprofit entity that I now work for is absolutely a phenomenal platform to get this kind of news out there. We, we don't, we're not owned by anybody. We don't have to worry about advertising. 
So all that, that happens is I go to my editors, I say, this is what I would like to do. And they say, go do it. And so, you know, it, whether this is all going to, you know, survive 10 years from now, I don't know. I actually have no idea. But all I can tell you is that right now in New York City, the presence of the city and, and not profit local news organization is critical because there has been a, you know, serious um, drop in the number of reporters who cover this stuff. And so, you know, hopefully we're here to, we're here to stay. And the, the idea that public housing tenants uh, could suddenly disappear again uh, because no one's paying attention to them really kind of breaks my heart. And that's why I'm continuing to try to do this, this focused journalism that, that looks at an actual uh, mother and daughter and how this insane bureaucracy uh, did a number on them. And uh, that's what I have to say.